Hey everyone, sports, everything sports. Aaron, it's always up to you. Great yes, to have you. Yes, a very good morning to you. Good yeah. morning to you, Tundu. Morning. Yeah, looking angelic today. Good morning to You're you, so Doctor. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Angelic. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now let's get it started. Um, Why did my mind go to Angelica when you said Angelica? <laughs> um, okay, so um, let's start it out from a sad note. Most of our stories today actually has a sad undertone to it. Um, but start started from the U.S., where the pilot of the helicopter that was actually carrying uh, the late Kobe Bryant and his daughter and seven others. Um, at the moment, um, the U.S. safety investigators have said that the pilot might have been disorientated amidst the fog. And remember, this actually happened on the 26th of January, that particular scene there. And the man is still greatly missed. The pilot, who is Ara Zubayan, was among those who died there. And there are talks that he felt a self-induced pressure to complete that particular flight due to the fact that he was carrying a superstar, Kobe Bryant. And at the moment, there are still talks about investigation strategies to go on to ascertain what really happened in January of 2020. Really sad there, I must actually say, concerning this, because a man who had so much to give was almost cut short in his 40s, and his young daughter Gigi, who a lot, were, a lot was expected of her to probably take the mantle of her father, did not happen. Now, moving away to dad from that to what happened in Nigeria. Sometime last year also, we brought the news about this particular boy on the screen, Chineme Martins, who actually died in a game between Nasara United and Cassini United. Um, graphic photos, I must actually say. And the moment the family of the boy are suing the Nigeria Football Federation, the league management company, and Nasara United at the National Industrial Court to the tune of 120 million. They are claiming damages that were suffered for the 23-year-old who died last year. Uh, we know that the Nigeria Football Federation gave the family 4 million, which they claim was spent on the burial of the boy. And at the moment, they are claiming negligence on the part of the Federation on even the match, um, some of the match officials and the Nasara United, because we, we showed pictures of that particular ambulance, which was supposed to walk, but unfortunately on that day, they were caught hands out with them pushing the ambulance on the day. So really sad, we're still watching that particular case. It's supposed to go to court sometime in March. I will still be following the development from this case, but at the moment, the family are suing um, the Nigeria Football Federation, the league management company who run the league, and also Nasara United and the match commission on the day, a tune of 120 million naira. Moving away from that, here in Nigeria, we brought this news sometime last week in the afternoon when it broke that former defender uh, Yisa Sofolue um, was admitted to Luth, and yesterday, Confirmation has actually come in that he has passed away. He was in the intensive unit. He was suffering from cerebral atrophy. Rather unfortunate. Yisa Sofolue, everyone on the, um, used to call him the dean of defense back in the day. He was quite an astute defender who played for some of the biggest teams, Abiola Babes, IIC, and also he was part of the 1984-88 uh, Nations Cup team that went on to do great things for Nigeria. He had 40 caps for Nigeria, scored one goal in his time for Nigeria. Rather unfortunate that we have lost another golden icon. Now to a bit of tennis, Serena Williams at 39 is still soldiering in her head, and she actually won a match yesterday, quite emphatic, 6-3, 6 love against Stovandovic. And these are some order of plays today. Uh, Pliskova will be in court today. Uh, Ashley Barty will also be in court today. The Aussie, Titipas will also be in court today. Uh, Switzerlina will also be in court today. And we'll, a lot is still expected from Rafa Nadal today at the Rod Liver Arena. Some of the results coming in, Dominic Thiem, quite emphatic, 6-4, 6 love 6-2. Um, this was early hours of today. And also moving on, some other results that actually came in, that is actually coming in, rather, from the US and um, from the Australian Open is quite emphatic. We are, we are seeing a breeze, a massive stroll for some and quite upsetting for others. Jonah Conta yesterday, I must put it into context, also had to pull out of the Aussie Open because of injuries. We've seen some that were, that were not fully fit coming here, falling by the wayside, and those that have prepared mentally and physically for the competition are just having a breeze.
When we get to the business end of the competition, the men will be separated from the boys. And before I come to you guys quickly, Manchester United once again showing the resolve to beat Western United yesterday at Old Trafford in the FA Cup fourth round. And Manchester United will be getting to the quarterfinals with the hope of winning a trophy in what is looking like a very disappointing season already. Well, a quick comment on uh, Yisa Shofolua. Uh, many Nigerians of the middle-age category will remember him yeah. as uh, a very strong defender. Left back, right? That was the position in which he played. He was with uh, ITT Waves and later 3SC and also later uh, Abiola Babes. Yeah. And he spent uh, most of, the t of his time uh, in Abiola. I looked in Tunis' uh, direction <laughs> because Abiola Babes was... Uh, you know, established by that, mm. the pillar of sports in Africa. And Abiola Babes was one of those major uh, teams. Back uh, in the day, yeah. In, in those days. Now, uh, Yisa Shufulue, as you said, yes, died of uh, cerebral atrophy. He was in coma uh, for some time. Uh, but I think we need to note the point that, um, you know, at some point uh, there was a call for financial assistance for him. And the Minister of Youth Development and uh, Sports, uh, Sunday Dari, we were told he intervened. Uh, but even in, in, in spite of that intervention, uh, that did not help much. But in any case, we'll remember him uh, for his excellence on the field of play. He scored only one goal, yeah. uh, 40 caps, uh, but he was a defender. So you didn't expect him to put in as many goals. And yeah. He was actively involved you know, in all departments of the game. Uh, you know, in the course of his career. But again, the point I need to make is this, about financial assistance that they were calling for with regard to Yisa Shofolue, before him, uh, John Sinchuku, before him, uh, uh, Rashidi Yekini, and uh, so many other uh, mm. athletes. Now, what is it about our footballers, about our athletes in Nigeria, that we cannot put in place a very strong insurance scheme uh, to protect them. And that's what takes me to the case of Martins, the gentleman that you mentioned, mm. whose family has now taken the Nigerian Professional League uh, to uh, court. Uh, they are asking for about 120 million uh, naira mm -hmm. as compensation. Now, he was on the field of play. Uh, he just had this sudden death syndrome. The same kind of situation that we had with, uh, uh, what's that uh, famous name now? Samuel Okwaraji. Yeah. You know, and we've had many cases like that. Now, in some particular case, we were even told that there was no ambulance to take him to the hospital. Mm. And that's why they are even suing the, uh, the manager of the match yes. on that particular occasion. But the, more, yeah, but the more disturbing part of that story is that we're told by the uh, uh, leader of the Nigerian Professional Football League that there's no insurance for players in Nasarawa United which is the team that uh, uh, Martins played for. Now, why will you engage people, either in sports or in any situation, and there will be no insurance? I think that that's something we need to look into, either in sports or in other fields. I know that the NUJ for years has been talking about insurance for journalists uh, at an organizational level, and that has not happened. So people just have this long career, and then somewhere down the line, they have health issues, they have other issues. There is no insurance to protect them. It's not a good way to manage their human resources. True. Mm. Quite a very sad one. Uh, so sad. But, but how are we going to have insurance where NFF coaches have not been paid for 22 months? That's, <laughs> that's another very sad spell. So people that are ex, that have done well for this nation, are talking of insurance, but then when people that are currently serving as coaches have not been paid 22 months salary. Well, the NFF happened. has tried to pay some. Genetra got two months. Out of how many out months? Out of uh, five, five months. months. They are still owing And somebody months. else got nine months out of, out of uh, 15 months. 15 months. But they are still owing them. They are still owing them. Okay. And it's called a monthly salary. <laughs>